first, let's start on MJ and who's paying. Chris Jansen joins the conversation. Chris, someone I'm hoping will be at this meeting with great frequency, as I believe California is uh, the most, one of the most interesting conversations that we're going to have in this country will be the California conversation, uh, not just the Michael Jackson conversation, but the bankrupt state conversation, the technological innovation conversation, uh, the legalization of marijuana conversation, on and on. Well, let's think of California as America 2050. And Chris Jansen uh, as the reporter on the beat that is the future of America. Uh, but for, for, for starters, Chris, we'll do Michael Jackson. What, wh what's the current state of play? Who's saying what? Who's paying for what? What's going on out there? Well, that's a good question. Who's paying for what, Dylan? A lot of people are asking that question. Uh, some people are saying, in spite of the fact that police are saying, don't come down here unless you're one of the 17,500 people lucky enough to get tickets. Stay away. There's going to be a perimeter, all this security. Some people are suggesting as many as three quarters of, of a million people could come here. And the estimate that we're getting here at NBC News, two and a half million dollars. The question is, of course, who will pay for it? You're looking at a city with a budget deficit over five. $500 million. You've got police, you've got sanitation, you've got communications costs. Some people are suggesting, including some people on the city council, why isn't AEG live, the folks who were putting on the concert paying? Why aren't Michael Jackson's uh, folks paying? Yeah. Part of the question being, so much money is being generated now by his estate. Clearly, why should the city that's talking about laying off people have to pick up the tab, Dylan? Yeah, and let's talk a little bit about this. I want to bring Dennis Zine into the conversation outside of the Staples Center. He's an L.A. City Council member who I think agrees uh, with what we're talking about. It certainly uh, doesn't want to see the taxpayer pay. Toure is also with him. Man, you left me. One day on the set, you bounced to L.A., uh, but it's nice to see both of you. Let's walk through a little bit of this. Dennis, do you have a handle on how much it's going to cost the taxpayer to get Michael Jackson's memorial service uh, here and gone? Well, I know the numbers keep going higher and higher. The last estimate was two and a half million dollars. It started out at a million dollars, and now it's up to two and a half million, and it continues to grow every single day. We've got a number of officers at Dodger Stadium where they're going to be distributing the tickets and the wristbands. This morning, we've got security here at Staples. It's been here for the last few days. It'll continue through this evening into tomorrow. And if the p folks show up, the uh, thousands of people show up as they anticipate, we anticipate having right. thousands of officers here from the Los Angeles Police Department. We have a 10,000-person department. If we need mutual aid, we have the L.A. County Sheriff's Department along with the California Highway Patrol. And our department is preparing to have a large uh, number of officers as well as a large crowd of folks that show up that do not have a ticket. And people are being told, do not show up if you don't have a ticket. Right. People may be showing up from other parts of the country because they did receive the notification to have a ticket. Right. But the crowd, the traffic control is going to be horrendous. Yeah, let's look at this again. We've got, again, your two and a half million dollars for 2,500 officers there. So that's the, the LAPD out of pocket. But it gets more interesting. Uh, potential revenue for the people that own the rights to Michael Jackson's asset, which is his entertainment, his music, and his video, uh, the rehearsal video movie, the Jackson's London concert, DVD video sales, they have, there are a lot of assets that are still to be monetized, still to be sold and turned into money. Meanwhile, California, I don't know if we have this full screen that shows who gets checks and who gets I IOUs. In the current budget crisis, it is uh, startling sometimes to see who's not getting money who, and who is getting money. Touré, what is your sense of where the responsibility for all this resides? In other words, should we be even having this conversation and should the taxpayers' involvement even be part of this or is there enough money on the table and enough future revenue from the Jackson estate that this is, this is, this is silly? Well, you know, I don't know. I wouldn't uh, put it on the Jackson family to pay for this. I mean, this is a historical event that people will talk about and remember for years to come. You know, I mean, I, as a taxpayer, I struggle to say the taxpayers should pay for this or should pay for that. But, I mean, this is something we're never going to forget. You know, I mean, a 100 years from now, they're going to go, oh, my God, they had to redefine the parameters of life, of, a man, of humanity, of America for this guy consistently throughout his life. Number one child star of all time. Biggest album of all time. It's funeral memorial, but really the people's funeral at the Staples Center. I mean, you know, just, just having to change the envelope for this guy over and over again. And, you know, I mean, like when you create the biggest star in the world, that's what's going to happen.
But, but just because Michael Jackson, and God bless him, was able to create and, and make himself into, with those he worked with, into the, one of the largest, if not the largest star of all time, why is it that, 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 that the bill for that tremendous event ends up with a bunch of people who are already busted for money paying for a, a variety of illegal immigrants, whether you like it or not. They also benefit from those illegal immigrants. That's a conversation for another day. Uh, a, a, a society that is sending IOUs uh, to people instead of money uh, for public assistance, drug rehabilitation, these sorts of things right now, and yet we're going to write a check for somebody who's sitting on m millions of dollars in assets. It makes no sense to I mean, me. You know, I I think you see a lot of times taxpayers paying for things that perhaps they may not want to pay for, right? I mean, I know in New York, you know, we're paying $47 million as taxpayers for the Yankees to have a new stadium. If we voted on that, would we vote for that? Maybe, maybe not. But, you know, those are the sort of things that the politicians sort of put on us but sometimes. That's why they don't Dennis is that there. You, but well, there's Dennis right the there. The game goes. Put it on him. Let let me, put it right this. on him. Dennis will wear it. He doesn't want to pay well, for let this. Let Go me, ahead, Dennis. Let me say this. AEG was going to promote the concert. AEG owns Staples, operates Staples. AEG is putting this memorial on. And all due respect to the Jackson family and the Michael Jackson, an international star, no disrespect. But this particular memorial service is going to cost $2.5 million at this stage. I believe AEG should pick up the tab for that. Not the Jackson family, but AEG, they're going to make a lot of money on it. They should pay the tab for this particular memorial service. And all due respect to everyone, this is a memorial service. It has to be done in a dignified fashion. It's not a money-making operation, but in essence, it will be for AEG. They should pick up the tab. I Literally agree with that. Taxpayers. I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you. Chris Jansing, are you there? Yeah, is, is, let me tell you this, Dylan. I mean, let me play devil's advocate for just a second here, because one of the things that even some of the council members I've talked to who are concerned about these costs have said is, look, part of this is built into our budget. We do extraordinary events. It's part of what Los Angeles is about. It's why we're the entertainment capital of the world. But also, if you go around here and you talk to folks who are running the hotels, who are running the restaurants, there's going to be a real economic boom. What we haven't seen yet is the numbers on how much money all these people will bring into the city of Los Angeles. We have called around a little bit. For example, the Wilshire Grand Hotel, which is just on the block, about a half mile here from the Staples, has a thousand rooms. They're 90% booked as of last night. They think they'll be sold out. Last week at this time, they were only 60%. I'll bet if you call the Marriott here or any of the other hotels, there's a Holiday Inn right next door. They'll tell you that they're booked too. So there's also a, an economic plus that comes with this. How it's going to balance out, you know, we'll see in the final wash. But there's no question that all these people who are going to come into Los Angeles are going to bring cash with them. Yep. And, and you make a great point and a great counterpoint. Thank you, Chris. Uh, thank you, uh, Dennis. Thank you, Toure.